So in the last couple of lessons, we just got our feet wet with DAX by creating a couple of column formulas to enhance our data model. Uh, I'm going to at the column level. So just a quick reminder of what that looked like. Um, we went into the product dimension, for example, and added a couple of calculated columns to pull in a related value for the uh, subcategory and category for each of our product rows. And this is a really good use of DAX, but it's not the only one. Next, we're going to talk about using DAX to create calculations that are kind of model-wide. So we want to create new metrics. To set this up, we have this pivot table within uh, Power Pivot. So this is using our, our BISM model. And I've just gone into the sales table here and clicked on the sales amount. So what Power Pivot does is when I click on that sales amount, it, it goes ahead and puts that into my values area. It notices that it's a number. So because it's a number, it assumes that I want to do a sum of sales amount. And it's kind of an internal automatic process of creating a measure. So, and that measure can be sliced in various ways. So if I was to come here and click on channel name, I can see that my sales amount measure, which was automatically created, can now be sliced by my row labels of channel name. But I want to have a little more control over that process. So the next thing we'll do is use a DAX formula to create measures that we can use that are a lot more complicated than just summing up the sales amount. So to do that, I'm going to go to the Power Pivot window. And instead of putting the, a calculation into one of the cells within the table, I'm actually going to go below this little divider line. You see this little guy here? And I'm going to put the calculations down here. Now this design environment is, is really flexible. You can put your calculations anywhere you want. Um, you should associate them with the appropriate table when you can. Wherever I define this calculation, so if I defined it within product, it would actually appear there in my pivot table. Actually, I'm going to create something in the sales table. So I'm going to do this. Um, now I, I could create it in the other table if I wanted. It just wouldn't make a, a whole lot of sense. It would, it would be, seem misplaced. So I'll, I'll put it here. Um, I'm going to do a few different calculations. And I can put these, these formulas anywhere down here I want. It really doesn't matter. So one thing I'm going to do is, is duplicate what you just saw with that sales amount um, number. And, but I'm going to make my own, give it a different name because I don't really like sum of sales amount. And I want to go ahead and put that into my model here. Um, I could type in a formula up here uh, straight away, and I'll do that in a few minutes, but there is a shortcut. So if I click this auto sum, you see it says create measure based on the sum of the selected column and display it below the column. So I'll go ahead and click on that. So I have sale of sales amount. I'm not wild about that, that, uh, that name, so I'm going to give it my own name. And you notice the syntax here is... Um, I'm going to call this revenue, actually. Why? Because I can. I can call this anything I want. So it's the measure name, colon, and then the DAX formula, which is a lot like an Excel formula. And notice this is equals sum of sales amount. Since we're in the same table, we don't have to specify the table name. If we wanted to combine that with uh, numbers from another table, we would have to, we'd have to specify what that other table was. And so what had happened here is we got our revenue sum right there and, and print it out. And what this is doing is it's getting us the sum of the entire table. So there's no context, no slicing applied. Um, the other thing I'm going to use is cost. So I'll auto sum that. Again, I'm not wild about this name. So I'll change that to cost of goods sold cogs. And notice it's even in a different place. So it doesn't matter where these go. Uh, the If I have my revenue and my cost, I might be interested in margin. So this one, there's no auto sum button for margin. I'm going to have to type this in. So I'm going to type in margin. And that's going to be equal to, and I'll just click over here, revenue. Let it type for me. Minus cost. Enter. And now I have margin. It didn't auto format that, so I'll go ahead and format that as US dollars. This is a little narrow to see, so I'll widen that up a bit. And uh, these are really big numbers. Maybe I don't like as many uh, decimal points as that. So I'll go ahead and just change those. And the last calc I'm going to do is a gross margin percent. So the gross margin percent. And here I'm going to put um, some characters and spaces in. So I need to bracket that. So equals parenthesis revenue minus cost 
divided by revenue, enter. And I get this number here. Now I intended for that to be a percentage, so I'll just click the percentage formatting and one decimal place for me is fine. So it's that easy. I mean, that was very simple, uh, a lot like using Excel, uh, but a lot more powerful than using Excel because I've created measures that I can now slice and dice. And to look at, see what I get out of that, I'm going to switch to my workbook and notice again, power pivot data was modified refresh because at this point, if I look through here in the sales table, this, these new measures I put in are not there. So let me click refresh, bam, they just appeared. And now I have these fields or columns or measures, I'll call them measures. And I know that they're calculated because they have little calculator buttons there. I've already have this pivot table that has the calendar year down the side. So if I want to look and check these, if I click revenue, I get revenue. And then my cost of goods sold, margin, gross margin, percent. And I can see that these numbers are, are different because they're being calculated. Um, the, the total amount, this is what you saw in the power pivot window, is now being sliced by the year. And that's automatic. Um, the aggregations are being, are being done correctly. Nothing I have to do there. And because this is now part of the model, I can slice and dice this however I want. So if I slice by channel, you can see I get catalog, online, reseller, store, all sliced, all recalculated at every level. So that's just a quick example of how we can use DAX to make measures within our model. And you see how quick and easy that is. And the nice thing about this is we can immediately use those measures. If we found that, you know, I, that it wasn't quite right, I didn't quite like it. I can just go over to the power pivot window again, change the measure, uh, save it, refresh in the pivot table, and I would get uh, whatever my new value was going to be.